Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Red Hat Summit 2015. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is The Cube, and we're here live at Red Hat Summit at the Heinz Convention Center. This is day two of The Cube, day three of Red Hat Summit. Open source, open shift, PaaS, no, PaaS is kind of old school, Stu, we're, <laughs> we're hearing. Uh, Docker, containers, all kinds of cool stuff going on. Delano Seymour is here, he's the CTO of Six Fusion. Delano, thanks for coming on the Thank Thank you. Good thanks for having you. me. Yeah, so, a lot of good action going on here. Um, tell us, let's start with Six Fusion. What do you guys do? You're a partner of Red Hat. What's your shtick? All right, Six Fusion is a company that's set out to create a way to meter consumption for IT. Uh, we want to do it in a pretty interesting way, and that is uh, meter IT like you meter electricity. So we've created a standard unit of measure for consumption in the IT world, and then we apply that to allow people to use that unit to uh, build their customers based on usage and consumption. So, so their objective is to make sure they're charging out appropriately, is that right? That's correct. So in some models you might, uh, it's, it's like that trying to fill the box. You know, you have a box trying to fill it with rocks versus sand. Uh, so you don't necessarily fill the whole box if, if you're billing by the box. So what we do is try to measure exactly what you use, like water. You know, putting water in that. So it used to be easy, it used to be MIPS. How many MIPS you got in your shop, right? Exactly. Okay, so what's the measurement today? So we call it the workload allocation cube, uh, and Kilowack for short. Uh, it, it, it is similar, it, it creates a little grill when people hear that, but <laughs> it's similar to a kilowatt, right? So we want to create that measurement for consumption similar and to electricity. And it stands for workload? Allocation. Allocation. Cube. Cube. Yeah, like the cube. Like the cube. Yes. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> and and then how does that translate into to dollars, which is so, ultimately what people So want to know. what makes up that workload allocation cube is six main resources that we measure, and then we combine that ag algorithmically to create that one unit of measure. The six measure the six resources is six uh, CPU, memory, storage, and then three IOs: disk IO, LAN IO, and RAN IO. So what we're trying to do is encapsulate what a particular workload or application consumes of a particular infrastructure. So it's disk, LAN, and WAN? Yes. I.O.? Okay. Yes. All right, and so that's all the infrastructure. Yes. So well, well, that's technically what the application itself or the consuming. workload is consuming out of the infrastructure. We look at infrastructures like generators. Okay, yeah. great. That's, that's the way it should, you should look at it. Right? Exactly. Isn't the whole thing a utility? Exactly. Yeah. And, and application focus, which is nice. I mean, so much, you know, we, we spent for years at Wikibon, you know, trying to talk about chargeback, but really even getting to showback was kind of tough exactly. to kind of understand it, because usually you're starting from the infrastructure, you know, at the bottom and working up, and, and you're starting from the application layer and looking down. Exactly. That's exactly how we do it. And, and uh, OpenShift presents a nice package for us. In fact, containers present a nice package for us because that container is closer to the processes versus trying to meter it at the sort of machine level. So being able to meter it higher up the stack makes it get gets us closer to the application and closer to the workload. So what 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 is the meter? You somehow probe that system or Yes, so we, we build software for we build we build meters. <laughs> that, software that, meters. That's what we do. Yes, software meters. And those meters basically uh, are used to meter a particular infrastructure. Uh, we, d our premise is to meter from the outside, so we never want to, you know, be inside like an agent, because then that affects the consumption of the actual thing we're metering. So we basically create meters that then interrogate the whole infrastructure, so it'd be a group of virtual machines, containers, whatever, physical machines, and then report back the usage. So you're looking for, okay, What's what's the application doing? Exactly. And what resources is it, is it consuming? That's correct. And then then it gets to how much does that cost? And that's an internal. Exactly. So the way we do cost, right? we make it simple, right? It's a dollar per kilowatt. So you just add a dollar figure to the unit, and some infrastructures are high performing infrastructures. Some infrastructures are low performing infrastructures. Therefore you can adjust cost based on performance. So does a customer take their, you don't really care what they do, the system doesn't care, put, put whatever input in you want it, but what yeah. do customers typically do, what's best practice? Do they take their capital budget, do they take their operating budget, do they take a blend? So what we They're, sort of do, or quote unquote, start away, because it could, every, co every company is different. They do their own ways of, 
of allocating resources. But the start of it is to basically take your fixed costs and your operating costs and boil it down to a price per month that you um, that, that that you use to that that it costs you to run that infrastructure. And then what we do is we have a methodology to find out the capacity, the productive capacity of your infrastructure. So now you know the productive capacity, you know what it costs you, you can divide that up and say how much per kilowatt you're going to charge. So most customers can probably get to that figure reasonably easily, right? Correct. I mean, it's when you ask them to figure out exactly what you're doing. You know, I've dealt with a zillion customers before. How much does each application consume? They're like, I, I Right, but that, I that's no our, that's what we do. Yeah. So you know yeah. your costs, right. we know what the applications are consuming. But what they By would normally do is they'd, they'd call a PWC and they'd send in an yes. army of people. That's right. And they'd take six months. That's right, a million dollars, and then <laughs> they get the answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. can, can, can you just walk us through kind of the scope of what infrastructure you can cover, what, what, what environments, as well as, are there limitations as to which applications you can look through? Yeah, so currently we support uh, virtualized environments, so VMware is one and Zen is another. And then we also uh, uh, support um, physical hardware, but that's where we have to put agents, unfortunately, okay. for physical hardware. So we support Windows and Linux. And then what we're working on now is to add OpenShift to our list of supported platforms to meter and monitor uh, meter containers. Okay, so so great. So you, you, you've had this software for a while, and now, yes. now you're getting to OpenShift. Why, why don't you walk us through what, what led you to OpenShift? Why is it a fit for what you're doing at SixFusion? And you know, ultimately, you know, what, what, what's the benefit for your customers? All right, so what led us to OpenShift is that we created a prototype and said, I think this will work with OpenShift, but we wanted to find out what the customers feel. Uh, so we, we met a couple of folks at OpenShift, and they recommended us to the OpenShift Commons, uh, where we did sort of a briefing of our prototype. And once the customers were able to see our prototype through OpenShift Commons, then we got some feedback from the customers about what to do, how to make it better, you know, what to change, what are they looking for. And we find that a lot of people are f find that they need the metering, especially with OpenShift, because being able to meter a, a group of containers that are very uh, transient, they come and go, uh, is kind of tough. Yeah, to bring up a great point, I mean, I think when we launched virtualization, we worried about VM sprawl. And, right. and I've heard in the container world, there's concern about, I guess, with microservices, you could have you know, services that are just you know, growing out there, almost like a sprawl there. So right. having some way to understand it uh, you know, exactly. should, should be real useful. Exactly, and being able to track that. All right, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, and that co-creation is really interesting too. You know, wh where are you along the development of this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how long do you think it'll take you to kind of fully embrace uh, OpenShift? Right. So currently, we're we're in the um, phase where we're doing the planning for our product. So we've done the prototype phase. We know what it is we want to build, and now we're working towards uh, the productization of our our plans. Uh, so I can't really say when that will be released at this point, but uh, we hope it's going to be released within the year. So this is this is a good example of Internet of Things. Yeah, yeah exactly. In fact, in fact we have lots of them. <laughs> right, right. So, okay, so t take us through a typical customer scenario. So you come in and say, okay, I have a problem. What's the typical problem that they'll, they'll tell you? I don't know what's going on in my yes. infrastructure, so, where I'm spending, where I'm consuming. Help mm -hmm. me sort that out so that I can charge back or just so that I know. Right, so we, we have a lot of use cases. The main problem we have, people say, I don't even know what my state of affairs are. So we have a bench line in process where we say, okay, great, we'll install our meters and we can tell you what you're consuming today. Create a baseline. Create a baseline. And then the next step is, okay, after I have a baseline, um, I then want to either optimize, might be a path that they take, I want to make my, my, uh, my cost, uh, I want to lower my cost by improving my consumption rates and my consumption patterns. Or they might decide that they want to take that particular infrastructure and move it to a cloud platform or a PaaS or some other platform because that's what they were thinking of doing and needed to know what that could potentially cost. Of course, the most common case is that they just want to be able to charge back or bill back the consumption to the constituents. What do you do with all the data that you collect? Uh, well, we keep it all, <laughs> number one. Um, but we all, our company is theoretically a data company. Uh, so the meters are a means to an end. Uh, we, we want to be able to provide information to our customers about trends and about market, um, you know, consumption patterns of, of applications and trends in the market because our ultimate goal is to trade compute. 
to trade compute? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, I would think you would you could you could tell me, look, you, uh, you're consuming this for these applications, and you're you're way over consuming compared to the you know here's here's the mean. You know, right. You're over here. Exactly. You should be here if you want to get here. These are the things that you have to do. Exactly. We we can basically say that. Listen, you're fifty percent more than your than a particular company in your vertical or in your market. So you want to create a marketplace. That's correct. Kind of the, 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 the well, it's really not Uber, but it's Uber-like. <laughs> got yes. extra capacity here, let's use it over here. That's correct. So what's the technology that is required to enable that? I mean, you got to, first of all, you got to have a transaction system. I guess that's probably the easy part, but you got to have a way to share that resource. Right, so our goal is not to move workloads around. That's not, right, what, right, that's right, not right, the business sure. we want to be in. Uh, our goal is basically to track and, and, and uh, provide reporting to our customers. We want to be similar to like the Bloomberg of IT. Uh, so we want to be able to help our customers, whether they be buyers of IT or, supp or um, suppliers of IT, to get more informed information to make decisions on what they do. I'll give you an example. You might have particular application types that are common in, in the market or in the world, and you have to now decide if you want to build a new infrastructure that design of that infrastructure should fit the common marketplace um, workload types that exist, the common consumption patterns. So being able to give that information to suppliers is something that could be useful. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, you know, you think back to the early days of VMware. We, we knew that VMware could really consolidate workloads because we were hugely underutilizing what we had today. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious, do you have, you know, w what is kind of standard or best practice today? Because we argue internally. My, my CTO, when I came on board, I said, oh yeah, customers are getting, you know, 25, 30%. He's like, Stu, they're getting <laughs> like 10% if they're good. Right. And if they're heavily virtualized and use a lot, you know, maybe they're getting 20%. And the hyperscale guys, you know, maybe you're getting to 50% or more, certain environments where, where they might bake some out to get a little bit higher, but it's rare to see somebody, you know, really utilizing what they have, and therefore that, that's a lot of, you know, kind of waste out there. That's correct. I mean, for us, uh, when, we, when we go into customers, generally we find that they get around the 30 to 40% yeah. of, of their usage, of, of their capacity, I should say. Yeah. And so what we want to encourage customers to do is understand that, and then figure out what they can do to improve that. Now, you can't just throw any workload on any box. It has to be workloads that fit together like a puzzle. And so being able to help customers you know, mix and match the right workloads is also part of the benefits of our, of our product. So, so, you know, from a success story, you know, says 30 to 40% is kind of pretty good today. Well, you know, what do you, what do you get them up to? What, what, what's the success? And, you know, do you give them some hero numbers that they go back that justified, you know, spending money with you? Right. Uh, so, for, from our point of view, um, I can't really say that we changed that game for them. <laughs> I think we, we're more of the company that helps them understand what to do next, um, and therefore we don't get the outcome <laughs> uh, after they make their decision, but I think that's something we could probably look, look into. How big a company are you? Then? Employee uh, size, revenue, however, whatever metrics you want to share with us. Yeah, we're, we're a small company, we're a startup, uh, so we have about uh, 15 co um, employees. One five? One five, very small. And, and private, obviously private, self, yeah, self privately funded. funded yeah, privately okay. funded. So uh, we do have uh, two venture partners, uh, GrowTech partners, uh, GrowTech Ventures, and um, and I can't forget them. So you're taking, kill me. taking VC money. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, we do have VC money. The other, the other ones. Um, so talk a little bit more about the tech behind uh, uh, behind Six Fusion. What's your role as CTO? What are you sort of cobbling together? What's the secret sauce? You want me to tell you the secret sauce? Well, I mean, just you know, conceptually. So my customer, <laughs> I want you to get me, you know, all excited. All right. Without giving away we'll, the story. We'll get a little whiteboard for you if you could please show us the diagram. <laughs> we'll take some pictures. It's like an episode of Silicon Valley. Yes, I like but, that episode. Yeah. Too. Yeah. <laughs> How do you um, do that? <laughs> so, I mean, our main secret sauce uh, is is the way in which we combine those six metrics together to make mm -hmm. one. That's our main secret. That source. algorithm that you that use. That algorithm that we use. Uh, after that, it's simple, and that's our goal: is to make it simple. Uh, we want to we want to make it just as simple as how you buy electricity, right? You just walk in, you say, I, "I need you to hook a meter to my house," and you pay every month what you consume. So, we just want to make it simple. And you don't unpack that algorithm for your customers. Or well, you we we don't, but we don't hide the six metrics either. So we give both the the um, consumption numbers and the six metrics. So you get seven metrics. Do out people of our ever plan. say ah, it doesn't look right to me? Uh, do they ever say that? Yeah. Um, people, or do they not say that because they just don't know? 
Uh, well, and if they just don't know, then you could tell them anything. Yeah, <laughs> Mo most people um, look at the six metrics and they're like, okay, this makes sense. Uh, okay. Because it's not like we hide the six metrics, so they can go and look at it and say, okay, I, I understand what you're doing. But they don't challenge you how you got there. No. They don't really care at that point. No. Because they know it all adds up to 100%. That's really That's what they correct. care about. That's correct. And they just, so we don't have much and challenge. They, actually, in a lot of ways, they're saying, hey, it's not us. We have this independent software. Yeah. framework that allows us to do yeah. that. And, and we're not the buyers or the sellers in this equation. We have no ulterior motives here. I mean, we're not here to sort of uh, get them to buy more of what they're already buying. Yeah. Uh, um, our goal is to just make it visible to you so is, you can make good decisions. Is that, tech, is that tech patentable or is that? Yes, we do have a patent. You do, on the algorithm? Yes, it already exists. Cool. So we and approved. We could look it up then. That's right. <laughs> it's going it's live. <laughs> so it is public. So, so, so your 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 software started out in the virtualized world, and you're you're starting to look in containers. Is OpenShift what helps you to get there? You know, do we think containers is going to greatly change how utilization is done? And I just what what what's your mindset around containers? So, first of all, containers, like I, I mentioned earlier, allows us to get higher up the stack, right? We can go into the machine and yeah. see what the applications and the processes are consuming. And what I like about um, OpenShift is that they allow, they take containers and turn that into services. And being able to see uh, the, say, 10 or 100 containers that are operating together to perform a particular function is what we want to meter, what the customer cares about, right? The individual containers might not necessarily be that useful. Okay, cool. So you've been working the booth here uh, at the show. It, Bring us in. What, what comes to a conversation we're having? You know, what are the challenges they're facing? You know, ha, ha, you know, how many how many good conversations do you have, and that kind of fit what you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, we're having a lot of good conversations. In fact, people after seeing me on the Commons doing a video on the Commons, they just walk up to me and say, "Hey, Yeti guy, on the Commons talking about meter and microservices." Yeah, and I'm like, "Yes," and I give them a little brief, and they're saying, "This is exactly what we need." Uh, we're getting people from different countries as well. First from Singapore. Uh, came up to us today talking about how we, they can use this in one of their customer engagements. So we are getting some, some good feedback. Um, of course, we, we're at prototype stage, so until we can actually get this product in their hands, um, we'll have to see what comes after that. All right, so what's next for you guys? We, we got, you're trying to get into that sort of business of putting buyers and sellers together, mm -hmm. right? What's the time frame for that, and, and um, when should we expect that? So we're already working with um, a partner we call UCX, a uh, partner named UCX, that is already working in parallel with us in order to get the idea of trade and compute um, in the minds of people. So I believe our, our timeline right now is to, is to get it done in the next year to two years, is to get people using the WAC and being familiar with it in their everyday processes. And how about the last word on Red Hat Summit? You know, kind of your partnership with Red Hat. Yeah, I, um, I think Red Hat um, was awesome in, in sort of welcoming us in the, into their partner ecosystem. And through the Commons, that was a great way to, one, get information about OpenShift, and two, to meet some folks that potentially could be cu customers for us. So we, we are great, we're, we're very appreciative of, of Red Hat. Uh, Delano, Seymour, cool story, Six Fusion. Really uh, interesting and solving a, a problem that's been around for a long, long time. Is mm -hmm. What am I consuming? So thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE. We're live from Boston, Red Hat Summit. We'll be right back. <laughs>